Hi, I'm Alfie from Alfie's Drift. Um, I'm the owner winemaker. We're from the Western Cape in South Africa, and we're going to spend a little bit of time telling us about um, our area, South Africa, and generally our wines. Hi, I'm Janelle. I'm, I'm married to Alfie, and I'm also a Cape Wine Master. I'm involved being with him on his side, selling, marketing, and also sometimes help with the blending and get involved in all aspects of our winemaking here in terms of being on his left side always. So the story about South Africa, and you might not know that, it's one of the oldest New World wine areas. It's 400 years old. And um, the soil types in the area is really special. So if you look at the whole wine industry in the world, it's all based around Mediterranean areas. Now what is a Mediterranean area? Mediterranean area is an area where you normally have a very cold ocean. And in our case, it's the Atlantic Ocean, which varies in temperature from anything from 9 to 15. And then we normally have a cold ocean, a large mountain range separating the continent from the sea facing part of um, that landlocked mass. And what happens, you have the, during the summer months, you have the hot air rising in the, in the inland area and the cold coastal breeze with convection coming underneath that which creates this draft which we're currently sitting in as you possibly can see and uh, that cools down our areas and at night when the inland temperature is again the same as the sea temperature the wind stops and what's amazing about this is this keeps your fruit healthy and also it allows your grapes and your fruit to cool down at night so that your acids don't drop out and you have quality fruit all the time we're going to start tasting our wines with you and we actually have already poured the very first wine off if you can pass us that bottle and it's called the signature signature Sauvignon Blanc now signature being or having Alfie's own signature on the bottle so in the Sauvignon Blanc is actually the most popular uh, wine style that the South Africans love to drink and it's crisp and it's nice and light and easy to drink with a beautiful acidity what do you say Alfie? Yeah interesting it's been a interesting harvest and with the COVID situation that we've all been in hasn't been easy for any of us but what I like about it it's got this beautiful fresh um, blueberries yeah. and um, lovely tropical hints despite uh, being backed up with a little bit of green pepper and sort of grassy notes. Really like it, really refreshing and light. Just so that you know that we have approximately 450 hectare under vine and 22 different varieties that we plant. But Sauvignon Blanc certainly is one of the most important varieties because of its high demand. So now, by now, we are ready for the second wine. Uh, this is Chenon Blanc. And Chenon Blanc, you can just pass it to me, this is the most planted grape variety in South Africa. Chenon Blanc actually originated from the Loire Valley and came out uh, with our Van Riebeek, the founder actually of the first vineyards in South Africa. It's also Alfie's favorite variety. It's bursting of flavors. He loves working with this grape and of course we make several styles of this, but this is the most refreshing that you can get. So if I can, in history, the guy that came out, what happened is Jan van Riebeek from the Dutch colonies came out in, in um, uh, 1652, I think the 6th of April if I'm not mistaken, when he arrived here and they had to put up a station to provide uh, food to the ships passing the Cape uh, of storms and what happens, they, obviously they weren't wine farmers and their crops failed. So what happened during that period of time, the Protestants and the Catholics were fighting in the center of, of, of Europe and the, uh, the, our family um, fled into Amsterdam and they ended up on a plane called Marvieda Plain. That's where our family name comes, Van der Marwe, which means from the Marvieda Plain. But our surname was actually for unit first. So they were loaded on the ships when Van Riebeek's crops, crops failed. And um, they came to South Africa with the first plantings of Chenin Blanc. So Chenin Blanc is not only for that reason, but because of, I get goosebumps when I say that, the quality of the grapes is just so amazing. Because you guys must remember, our job is to shift product. And chefing of product is, is all about the primary flute flavors. You can do whatever you like. You can have the best terroir, all that, but you need the best possible primary fruit uh, to chef with. And this is what this makes this wine well, absolutely let's incredible. Let's drink your most favorite uh, oh. Chenon Blanc. And I must, I must also tell you that Alfie is the only person that takes care of the vineyards. He's the only man that decides when they are allowed to harvest. And he does that by diligently tasting, tasting the grapes, tasting the grapes, and then at a special 
certain moment he'll say now we pick not because of the sugars mostly because of the developed flavors the phenolics of the grape more important so so that he can make and construct wines to be enjoyed that you don't battle to say well is it there isn't it there has it got the beautiful fruit flavors or hasn't it of course it has because this is his philosophy the ripe fruit that will come to our wine remember this now comes from the Lua valley and the, the french really make amazing shenans but in the last i think 10 to 15 years south africa has topped the charts every single year and they've been in the top they were the top uh, producers of Chenin Blanc in the world. And, and if some of you don't, haven't tried it yet, please do me a favor because it's something in between, Chen, uh, between something between Chardonnay, if you like, full body, oily, big Chardonnays, and Sauvignon Blanc. So something in the middle with an abundance of beautiful, ripe tropical fruit. And the mouthfeel on these wines are incredible. Just also do yourself a favor, always make sure that the alcohol is higher than 13 because you need ripe fruit for great Chenins. Alright, next wine is the Chardonnay. Chardonnay. So I have already uh, poured some in your glass. Thank you. So, this is the queen of all white varieties. As you know, in the world, this is the most wanted grape variety. Why? Because this lady produces so many styles of wine. Not only this particular Chardonnay that I'm holding in my hand that uh, Alfie made, it's very lightly wooded. But just to give it that slight backbone to bring the lady out of her sleeping state and tell you, look, and look here, I can give you some creamy, a creamy feelings to your to, to your palate with nice uh, citrusy tones. But they can make. She has a great affinity to barrels or wood, as we would say, and therefore you can make wooded chardonnay. And of course, the greatest form that chardonnay is, is in a bubble form. So a lot of champagnes are produced with this grape. But this is just to introduce you to something nice and fresh and young, very light, right? Yeah. And let's try that together. Let's okay. see. Beautiful. I love these lemony colors. And they shimmer. They always shimmer. Cheers, up Cheers. Cheers. No, no? Yeah. Mm, really, really yeah. pleasant. Nice. Um, you feel that creaminess flavor, coming through. Nice and creamy. Yeah, yeah I love absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of butteriness. Yeah. But beautiful fresh wine. Open and nice. Enjoy yeah. that. A piece of gem, actually, in our collection is the Viognier. Now, Viognier, you know, has its origin. It's a grape that has its origin in the Upper Rhone Valley. We are the biggest producers of Viognier in South Africa. Alfie, let's speak about and tell us them you've got it in your glass now. Uh, can you tell us about the aromas and the mouth? Well, what can you expect of drinking Viognier's? Well, Viognier, if you guys haven't tried it before, it's an incredible product. It's a very floral, apricot, yeah. peachy, uh, full mouthfeel. Slight wood integration, you'll taste on some of the ones. It's extremely lightly wooded, but a full, big palate. Actually, the white wine drinkers, as the red wine drinkers, white wine, yeah. to be frank with you. That is the great. wine they that you would love. But the complexity on this product is is absolutely incredible. Um, yeah. I think it's, 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 it's very important if you've never tried it as a consumer, just to give it a bash. Just give it a bash once, because you're either going to love it, I don't think any of you are going to hate it, but I think yeah, you should love it. It's a really experience to drink. I find this one of the greatest food wines. And a true what Alfie says, I always get, of course, our visitors that come and say, Oh, no, 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 I, I don't want white wine. I drink uh, red wine. And then I say, Then you have to drink this one. And they love it. They always love it. Say, so, Yeah, you're right. And you're not giving that to us now. And we have to buy extra wine. But it is a wonderful food wine because of its structure on the palate. It's, it's very inviting on the nose. The florals, and as you said, the sort of dried fruit and peachiness and so on. But it suits nice, uh, uh, you know, when you have any hot food, uh, like curries and so on. Very good part of creamy delicious and something that's got spicy in it. A wonderful chef's delight type of a wine. But with a curry, it's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, that's about rich fish. Where well, the Shannon would be your seafood accompaniment. So now the next, uh, and sort of for today, the last white wine that we're going to taste together, this is our 2 to 1 Chenin Blanc. But Alfie, tell us a little bit about what is 2 to 1, where does that come from? So Alfie, um, my grandfather built a little bridge over a large river here called the Breda River, which means wide river. And um, he was instrumental in building that little bridge, but also he was quite a famous rugby player and at the age of 19 they played a 
rugby game against the All Black Rugby team, which is New Zealand, and he scored the first try in history for South Africa against the All Blacks. So that was quite something. So that he was uh, numbered from Springbok number two 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 one, which is our national team. Um, so like you have the Eagles, we have the Springboks, and that's his story basically. Okay, so Springbok number two two one. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. right. Now the wine in this range, the two to one range per se, is something based on both, both worlds. So part of this wine comes from our barrels. So these barrel fermented wines, these wild yeast that are nice and solid, strong wines. And then 70% will come from the stainless steel tanks, from the wines that we've just tasted. So a barrel fermented, barrel matured 30% of our Chenin Blancs that comes from our super premium wines and the rest is from the tanks. Both worlds, the Grand Dames and then the juicy, playful wines created into one bottle. And never mind that this wine has won the top 10 in South Africa as well as our super premium. So we've got two wines, two of our Chenin Blancs in the top 10 in South Africa already. Chenin Blanc is, is really the most has its home from the, the Great Loire Valley. You can possibly think that you may, may, might have had some wines from the Loire Valley, especially from the Vouvray region and so on. So these grapes uh, do produce greatness in barrels uh, or barrel fermented wines. And here you have a chance to enjoy this beauty of something that's strong, but a lot of juice and flavor in your glass, don't you think? I think it's time that we go over no, to yeah, our let's red just wines. discuss this if you don't mind. You, can, you uh, can discuss it with everybody. Yeah, that, um, that's what's incredible here. Is, do, you, mm. do you get this complexity with the vanilla aromas came, coming through? Pineapple, Grenadella, really incredible, full mouth feeling. And if you guys that have not had Vouvray wines, just put that up next to them because those are possibly for your most talked about unique offerings in the world. It's something that you should experience if you're a wine lover. Really something special to, to taste and to experience. Then. Hopefully you guys will come and visit us in South Africa. It really is a safe, super place. And uh, it'll be amazing to, 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 to meet you all here and uh, to see me on the farm. And then hopefully one day you'll get a, a taste of our super premiums, um, which is another range above this that we'd love to share with you. Okay, Alfie, so pass me the Shiraz. I'll do the glory. Right, so again, we're back on the signature range. So we're going over to the red the story and our Shiraz is the one that I'm going to offer you now. Shiraz, Syrah, the same thing. It's just that in South Africa we call this French variety that we actually source from the Rhone Valley, Syrah. We call it Shiraz in our country. So all of the same thing. So a lot of people refer to Shiraz as what? Oh, I forgot myself. I was wondering what you were doing. Give you the bottle to pour. <laughs> it's like I poured my master. Yeah, yeah I think that's well, a good, good there service there. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> all right. So, Let's try it. Beautiful. Interesting. Beautiful colors, the yeah. cuttings of, of the Shiraz um, from Australia that you guys might know of, they all come from South Africa, which is quite, mm. quite interesting. Because remember, Australia is 300 years younger than the South African industry. Mm. So it's um, for a 100 year old industry versus a 400 old year old industry. It's interesting to see where the mothership comes from. So. And that's why also they call it Shiraz, like we do in South Africa. So if you taste the wine, you see it's got this intense purple color which nice. is really nice nice and useful yeah and then on the nose marriage immediately black currant and what you also pick up here is pepper so where does the pepper come from think for yourself in the olden days they didn't have the modern machinery we have now um have you ever tasted a grape with pepper in it or any berry with pepper in it no it doesn't exist so in the old days they used to stomp on the berries and on those stems and the pepper flavor actually comes mostly from the stems so um, interesting to taste that so what we do is we add we whole bunch press some of them and uh, to get that peppery flavor back and I think the ends of pepper comes through really nicely and what I like it's got this nice uh, so do you, you don't layers. use the, the, the stems on going for a long time you just sort of crush with them no what we do is we, 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 we roll it yeah so we yeah. put it in a, in a rolling with whatever system we use yeah. the pump overs punch throughs or just the pump over if you yeah. gently macerate it and then also the rotor tanks that we use um, but it shows up really nicely yeah so it's, it acts like a little filter that gives you a hint yeah. of the pepperiness it's nice it's a wonderful yeah. thank you Now we're ready to taste our 
special coupe. Two to one special coupe. This refers to a very special blend, a very special cuvee in French sometimes also mean a tank. So, well, when Alfie created this wine, he went to town. He went to town. Because remember now, the two to one range is what I told you, the best of both books, that nice discerning barrels, and then it marries off to all these special fruity, lovely, light drinking style wines from the tanks. And when we created this one thing, I thought, oh my word, we've got a little Chateau Neuf de Pop in the making here. Please remember, it's not Chateau Neuf de Pop up, it's Chateau Alfie from Alfie's Drift. Alfie went to town, as I've got a promise to tell you, Shiraz, of course, it's dominated by Shiraz, of which part of it, again, 30% comes from our barrels. And Alfie loves using the, the American oak barrels, but also a touch of French oak, right? So there's this 30% from the Shiraz will come from barrel, and a bit more from the, the same Shiraz that we drank very previously. And then, touch of Cabernet. Okay, so it's Shiraz, Cabernet, then comes our grape, Pinotage from South Africa, Grenache, also from the uh, Southern Rhone Valley, Grenache, Petit Verdot, a little bit of Petit Verdot, uh, Durif, also known as Petit Serra, Durif, and then a spit in a spot of Viognier, which, which is, is your, white grape. Which is our white grape. Yeah. Seven way blend, Alfie, created a very yeah. special cuvee. And I tell you, you sip, you smell, you fall in love. You fall in love. It is one of the greatest gifts in one bottle. I promise you. Well done there. <laughs> um, this is probably an arguable thing that I'm going to say now, but not all people drink blends. And think about it. Yeah. If you take the best from every product and you put it together and you get a complex, complex <laughs> product, um, which is just, just incredible to drink it. And the flavors of this, what I, I always get sort of mixed up about the little bit of Grenache flavors I get. And yes. Sometimes I get the Shiraz dominating. Yeah. And it's, you've got both worlds. You've got the blackberry based yeah. thing, you know, the marberries, a hint of that, the, the, the peppery, yeah. creeping in between. And then I also pick up licorice root, you know, yeah. whether it's and like back and marberries. And yeah. So it's blackberry and blackberries. It's, it's, it's just special. Yeah. It's special. Have you, have you seen the legs on that one, yeah. by the way? Oh, yeah. Well, well I'll be so referring to these beautiful glycerol tears. The tears in the glass, if you if you do that with your glass and you hold it still and you see that, can you see the drips? It sort of makes tears that drips off, you see. That refers to the beautiful glycerol content. That is a byproduct during fermentation. And this adds to complete beautiful mouthfeel. That is very special. And that absolutely just says quality. Quality and mouthfeel. Yeah. And that's from the glycerol in the wine. Cheers. Hey, cheers. And guys, we hope you're going to be visiting us in South Africa we'll some that. soon. It's yeah. um, and been remember, expensive and wonderful once you're here. I don't know what the flights cost, but once you're here, yeah, make a point of visiting us. Yeah, Thanks. you will be, because remember, we are a family farm. We're not anything there. We, we're at home. We are working here. We integrate our farming, and there's lots to tell us. Yeah, yeah. If, if you just remember that the families that work on the farm, many of them have stayed here for more than four generations. try and sell real so when you do get here we've got a game reserve with zebras Vorderbeers, Oryx, uh, Airline, Slipspringer, Spring, Airline. Spring, back, yeah, we actually have leopard here as well but we yeah, don't yeah. see them frequently we've been privileged twice, to see yeah. them yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so that's been yeah. incredible so we look forward to meeting you all and enjoy our wines and let us know how it's going hope to see Cheers. you all soon Cheers.